which two Jamaicans do Caribbean death row inmates adore? And no, it's not Chensia and Hussein. This is 1060 Crimes, and it's October 6th, 1977, Jamaica. Out of many, one people. Explosions are heard, and Junior Anthony Misick is dead. He's been shot. Three men are supposedly involved in the murder, including our two superstars, Earl and Ivan. They go on trial for murder at the Home Circuit Court in Kingston from January 10th, 1979 to January 15th, 1979. The prosecution had a single eyewitness. The main defense witness, Mr. Clarence Smith, was supposedly going to provide an alibi for Earl, but on Friday, January 12th, 1979, he temporarily left the court premises. When he returned, court had adjourned until Monday, January 15th. Mr. Smith never presented himself on Monday 15th, so the judge closed the hearing without his testimony. The jury only deliberated for a couple minutes before returning with a guilty verdict. As per the law, they were sentenced to death on January 15, 1979. The two were housed at the St. Catherine's Prison death row section, and they started their arduous appeal process. They went after statements made by the main prosecution witness who said Earl and Ivan had been friends with the deceased for three years and that Earl and the deceased had previously shot another friend of theirs. They never identified who had been shot or the consequences. This left an impression with the jury that the accused was capable of killing their own friends. Regarding Ivan, the witness stated that he had been with Earl at the time of the shooting and had a gun. However, they had not seen him actually shoot. Also, Ivan stated at the time of the killing, he had been home with his wife and children. The appeal was not successful, so the two men continued to languish in their individual six-foot by six-foot cell that only contained a piece of foam to sleep and a bucket to relieve themselves. They were confined to the cell for 23 hours a day, being allowed one hour airing. On the 13th of February 1987, their death warrants were read to them. Their execution was scheduled for February 24th, so they were relocated to the condemned cells right next to the gallows. They were weighed for the calculations for the hanging and measured for their coffins. From their new temporary cells, they could hear the practice drops of the gallows. Clack! 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 They looked either up or down as they made peace with the things they had done, too late to worry about the things they wished they hadn't. On the day, February 24th, time both skipped and dragged as they were torn between this world and the next, with the next already claiming victory. 45 minutes before the long walk, they heard the sweetest words ever whispered to them by a man. Yes, even after being in prison for a decade, the execution had been stayed. They would certainly die, but not this day. And it was revealed that the directions for the stay had been delivered on February 23rd, the day before. But word had taken an extra day to reach Earl and Ivan's cells. They would survive two more death warrant readings and casket measurings in February 1988 and February 1991. In November 1990, 93, Jamaica's highest court of appeal, the Privy Council, gave their ruling. They believed 14 years on death row awaiting execution was extreme mental anguish. The last execution in the UK was 1964, but when they did carry them out, they were often within a couple months of sentencing. They believed anything more than five years is cruel and inhumane as a phenomenon known as death row syndrome, which is an extra element of unintended punishment for convicted murderers. So executions must happen within five years of sentencing, otherwise the sentence must change from death to life. Earl Pratt was paroled in 2007. Ivan Morgan died in prison of natural causes in 1996. And the Pratt and Morgan ruling that allows just about all murderers in the Caribbean to escape the noose is the bane of most citizens. But wait. There's more. Trinidad and Tobago has entered the chat. In May 2022, Narish Budram, brother of executed Nankisun Budram, aka Dol Chedi, got the Privy Council to rule that after a murderer is saved by Pratt and Morgan, the courts can consider the individual cases to decide the length of time for their sentencing. It is no longer automatically commuted to a life sentence, so it is possible for the courts to release them much earlier than expected. Narish Budram was sentenced 
sentenced to death in 1996 for the 1992 murders of Anthony Tooks Greenwich and Stephen Bulls Sandy. But that's a story for another time. Please remember, I just researched the stories, so don't kill me because of the rulings. Although, I'm sure if you did, the Privy Council would find a way to set you free quickly. After all, the punishment no longer needs to fit the crime. This is 1060 Crimes, Small Caribbean, Big Crime.